All right, how I got to over five watts per kilo FTP. I'm gonna keep this very short, very sweet, and try not to ramble on too much. Anyway, so in February 2016, I got my power meter and I decided to do an FTP test quite randomly. Uh, there was no real reason why I was gonna do it on this day, uh, but I decided to do it. Uh, I can't really, I mean, this is the thing, it's like I did my first FTP test, but I didn't really hurt myself that much. You can see there's a big surge at the end, uh, but it was 244 watts, and I weighed about 60 kilos then, so it was about four watts per kilo. Uh, I haven't really changed weight much in the last, like, two years, really. Um, always been 60 kilos, more or less. Um, so yeah, that was basically my training. Didn't really do much, like you can see here, I did four watts per kilo with very, very minimal training. Maybe some days I do eight hour weeks, like this is a big time for me in December doing like 11 hour weeks. But most of the time you can see here, I'm doing literally like five hour weeks and I had four watts per kilo. So like for me, it wasn't gonna be mega hard to get to five watts per kilo just because I already had like decent fitness um, sort of straight off the bat. So that was pretty nice to have, to be honest. So you can see here, we're just screw, cruising through May. In the summer, like I'm not at school, so I did more hours. I did like ten, starting to do 10 hour weeks, um, which is pretty big. And I did, you know, I did some intervals, but not like crazy amounts of intervals. Um, so you can see here, we just a bit of tempo, um, some sprint, some threshold, whatever, whatever. Uh, I started doing a bit of racing in the summer as well. That was always good fun. Um, it definitely helps with fitness. Uh, and I did some longer rides. I was like, uh, rode the length of the country. So you can see here, this is a, some big weeks, 30 hour weeks. They help you a lot. My fitness definitely went up there. I think I held like 280 watts or something. Um, yeah, on this day here, uh, so middle of the middle of the tour, I did like 280 watts for 20 minutes. So that was like a 40 watt increase to what I had done before. You'll see the power here though, like isn't really accurate. Like obviously this weighted average power is real easy now, but, and it was to, at that point. But you can see here it says 260, but there's lots of power dropouts. Um, if it's non-zeroed, so as in it does ignores the zeros, 280 watts, I seem to remember. And I, that was when I was like, oh, actually I'm not that bad. Like I'm not, I'm not too far off. Um, the top 10 in the season comments. Um, but yeah, it was good. I, I, I hurt myself quite a lot up this climb. 21 minute climb, up a 4% gradient. I was going 23K an hour. So it's not mega, but you know, it was all good back then. I was I was pretty content with myself getting, well, I was top 10. It's now like 21st or whatever. But anyway, it was good, good holding those sort of numbers. So you can see endurance definitely works. I do enjoy, enjoy my endurance rides. And then like, you know, I got a holiday, I have two weeks off. Like I haven't been super strict in my training. Here I banged out some bigger, bigger weeks, 340Ks. Again, I was just not really doing a lot like of structured work, just you know, trying to push when I could. Um, and here I started doing some hill climb efforts, which are really important for me. Um, I find they really help uh, to push yourself mentally. So I did some hill climbs, you can see here. Uh, all these red ones are races, so that's a, hill, that's a Beck hill climb. That was the urban hill climb. This was uh, a two-man time trial and also a hill climb. Uh, and that was the Beck hill climb. So I did like four or five that year, and that definitely helps. So anyway, we'll skip through the rest of the 2016. Nothing really much happened, to be honest. I was just, you know, at school, doing some training, VO2 max sessions, like 10 minutes, 10 one minutes at VO2 max, then sweet swap of 10 minutes, and then four times five minutes at, oh, bloody hell, this sounds like a tough one. Um, it's like, I saw, this, I got really excited and smashed out big, big training, um, like suddenly. But in reality, like the main thing I just say is if you wanna get in your fitness, like number one, it's always gonna be hard. Like you're gonna have a genetic ceiling. For me, I'm like trying to hit six now and it's just not really gonna happen. Like it's sort of sad. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll try and hit six watts per kilo for 20 minutes, but I just don't really think it's possible um, for me. But you know, everyone to themselves. Anyway, and then this is again like January 2017. Um, didn't really do that much training again. I was playing football most weekends, um, so you can see my training's really limited. Again, five hours a week. Um, I'd say my FTP about an hour is probably like 280 watts, something like that. Um, so I did some VO2 intervals. Uh, I think this is like when I had a, some holiday. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about, like an hour and a half at 250 watts, weight average power. So you can see, like I didn't fuck around with my training. Like I was, I was doing some hard stuff when I had time. So you can see here, you know, like this is, um, yeah, some decent decent training, 300 watts um, for five minutes. This is on the indoor trainer, so it always does hurt a little bit more. But anyway, like that's the thing, you just gotta be consistent with your training. Here's some VO2 at max intervals in 2017. Um, this is slightly better, 330 watts, 340 watts, 340 watts. But compared to now, like again, it's not, it's not mega impressive. But it's just like the more you do, the more you train, just like train consistently, that's my, that's my main thing. Do long Ks, they definitely help, especially at the beginning. Uh, here was also when I hit six watts per kilo for the first time. Uh, I hit 370 watts for five minutes, which was, I was pretty happy about. Like I hadn't really 
hit that much in any numbers before. But you can see, like, like I don't do much training here, and I'm still fast. And that's the thing, you don't need to do much training. Like, if you have decent fitness from before, I just bang out some decent, like, quality sessions on the turbo trainer, um, it was good. Like, you can see here, I did some track uh, at school. Luckily, we had some track bikes, so I'd go to the track most Wednesdays um, and race there, and that definitely helps. Um, so yeah, I had a crash there, but you know, you can see like this is during exams. Um, so I didn't really train that much again, just because I had my exams, I need to concentrate on that. Uh, this is some more track racing, um, which is good. Like that was my main intensity for the week here. You'd say I like chilled out, chilled out, chilled out. Like, you know, I wasn't uh, like, I literally like, look, I did, okay, I did a sweet spot here for an hour and then maybe I did some threshold here, but again, like it's not proper training. Uh, and anyway, we'll zoom through, start to do some decent Ks again. So I went to France now um, and just bang out some like a 24 hour week. And that's the thing is for me, I can bang out these big weeks and they don't seem to be too bad. So it's good. Um, and then uh, yeah, up here I hit 300 watts for 20 minutes, which is five watts per kilo for me. So that was pretty impressive. I was probably weighed a little bit more then, maybe like 62, 63 then. But you know, it's like, yeah. But anyway, I was happy about that. Um, that was also altitude as well. So, you know, plus it was in the middle of a big training week. But anyway, it was good. Like these long Ks really do boost your fitness. Like if you do... Like, I don't know, especially going to the Alps, like, you just ride tempo up every climb. And it's like, you just require so much training stress in these two weeks. It definitely helped my fitness a lot. Uh, and then I did some more big Ks this week, three-hour rides, hill climb intervals, um, just trying to get ready for the hill climb season. Again, you can see, like, I'll suddenly do three-week block, like a three-day block where I just bang out the Ks. And then you start, you have a little rest day. And then by the time it's maybe Monday or Tuesday here, you suddenly feel incredible. But like, the other thing is, like, I'm not afraid to not ride. Like, look here. Like, I just didn't ride. I was on holiday. Just fucking chill out. Like, that's the other thing. People get so stressed out. It's like, if you're a pro rider, having two weeks off in the middle of the season is bad. But if you're just an amateur rider, two weeks is like, it's nothing, man. Uh, and then, yeah, his Hog Hill Racing, end of 2017. That was all good. Uh, this video is getting on a little bit, but we're almost at 2018. So the rest of 2017 was pretty shit training for me. I banged out some Ks, but I was, like, working and didn't really have much motivation. You can see, like, occasionally... I mean, the main thing is I always do a four-hour ride every week. That's my goal. If I do a four-hour ride every week, then, you know, you're always going to get keep some uh, endurance in the legs. And then, yeah, four times 15 minutes, sweet spot. That's another classic. Um, oh, yeah, sweet spot's good. <laughs> um, you can see I don't do too many sprints. Then I've got... Um, Went to Adelaide and started banging out some more Ks, did like a three hour ride today, that day, did some threshold intervals. Um, this is when I got my coach around January, um, which is pretty good, old tombell.co, good boy. Uh, and yeah, it just helps you like, you know, having the structured, structured training. So here I did some tempo with the guys and I rode with quick step for like, and trek for another two hours. So that was like a good four hour day out. And you can see the more you Ks you bang out, like this week I did 25 hours uh, and that helps quite a lot, including a race um, why I came fifth, and it was, it was like, decent. I uh, rode with Sky and, like, all the rest of it. But you can see here, it's, like, just consistency. Like, I had a crash here, didn't ride that much, but it's all good, just keep consistent. I mean, it's just boring, like, let's be honest. Like, being fast, most of it is just consistent, consistent training, not being overweight, eating right. So, you know, vegan diet definitely helps with your recovery. Like, 670Ks in a week, it really helps when you're not eating animal products because your legs feel fucking good the next day sleep well and don't eat too much salt if you're going to do an effort the next day because you're going to be puffy as and you're going to hold more weight it's really simple like that's the thing i've learned it's like you can stress out people stress out about oil here and like all the rest of it and it's just like yeah it might have a little impact but let's be honest most of it's just bang out k's do intensity and just ride your bike every day and it's real chill it's real real chill um so you can see here Again, like some days I just wouldn't just wouldn't be feel it. Like here I tried to do FTP test, just didn't feel it. Then did a big endurance ride. Um this is a big day out for me. So it was like I did 115k in the morning endurance ride, and then in the evening I did 40k where I did a time trial up Northern Summit. Um basically solo because no one was there. I did like 14 minutes 20 and just just crying. But that's the sort of good training. Here's a race I did, and then I think I hit my best ever 20 minute power on this day here, five and five and a half watts per kilo. And again, it's just like being consistent uh, and realizing that everything is going to be good. Um, so we're getting... All right. Uh, so yeah, now we're just getting back uh, back in London, uh, doing a bit of racing again. Racing is always good. Classic four-hour rides. Didn't have much sleep. Five hours sleep. Uh, 216 normalized. And that's just like... like You just see, I always just do some good endurance rides. Do enjoy them. Um, but yeah, it was, it's like, if you see my rides, there's always three, four hour rides. 
Um, this is when I went to Wales for an FTP test. That was a bit of a fail of a life. And then I just do some intervals. Um, as you can see, thresholds. My channel was back. And I'm now I'm back in Thailand. It's pretty beat. Did a bit of racing here. But again, you see, do some sweet spot threshold. Um, group rides. Um, you know, like, it's real simple. Just have fun with your training. Uh, enjoy Enjoy it. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Endurance rides, it's just easy, really. Um, I'm trying to find my... So this is, like, when I got my top 10 up Deutsche Tap. You can see, like, I don't know, my training's not mega. Like, 13-hour weeks, 10-hour weeks, it's not crazy. Like, before, I used to think you needed to do 15, 20-hour weeks. And, yeah, for sure, they help on your endurance and stuff. But, like, in reality, you don't need to do that many Ks to, like be fast. As you've seen before, I've done five hour weeks and still been have like an FTP of close to like 4.8 watts per kilo or whatever it be. So again, it's just like be consistent, enjoy your training, do long rides. Like that's it. Basically, if you're just concentrating on threshold, it's easy. Just sweet spot every day. I mean, endurance and sweet spot threshold and then do some full gas VO2 max efforts. It's all good. So I hope this is informative. It's always really hard to talk about your own training because it's all on Strava. But anyway, if you are looking at anything, um, then we can put on Strava. I think my training log's on private at the moment. If you want me to make it unprivate so you can see all this, um, then let me know. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that at this moment in time, but maybe I don't really mind if people see my power that much because it's slightly wrong. But anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.